Welcome to the Global Medical Device Podcast, where today's brightest minds in the medical device industry go to get their most useful and actionable insider knowledge direct from some of the world's leading medical device experts and companies. Well, time to time, you probably have heard me talk to one of our gurus or one of our subject matter experts at Greenlight Guru. Well, I do so again today. Today, I talked to Marianne Mitchell. Marianne is a solutions engineer, and she's part of our sales team at Greenlight Guru. She has a role of talking to companies that are evaluating the Greenlight Guru medical device success platform and understanding what their needs and their requirements are and explaining to them how Greenlight products and services can be a resource to help them accomplish success in their businesses. So Marianne has a great background and quality, a lot of experience with ISO 13485 and you know going through the whole audit process she loves audits and she has a lot to offer so i hope you enjoy this episode of the global medical device podcast hello and welcome to the global medical device podcast this is your host and founder at greenlight guru john spear and from time to time i have featured a meet the guru episode on the global medical device podcast and joining me today is one of our gurus at greenlight guru marianne mitchell marianne welcome Thank you. I'm excited to be here. Absolutely. So your role is a little bit different than some of the other gurus that we featured in the past. You're a solutions engineer. I guess maybe that's a good place to start. What does that mean and how do you get involved in the process? Yeah, good question. Well, I'm paired up with the sales organization. So first time for me working in sales, coming from industry. So I get to be paired up with uh, an account executive and then use my experience to kind of help them through the demonstration process. Sure. So you're talking to, I mean, you're newer to the team, but I'm guessing by now you probably have talked to at least dozens, probably quickly approaching hundreds of medical device companies from all over the globe. And your role is really to understand what that company is going through, what their needs are, what their challenges are, and help them or explain to them how green light products and services might be a resource, right? Exactly. Yeah. So let's go back in time a little bit in your career. Talk to us a little bit about your upbringing in the medical device industry, some of the things that you've done along the way prior to green light. Well, it started back in 2003. I got a job as a receptionist at an alternative medicine medical manufacturing company. And I was just curious what everybody was doing back there. You know, I didn't want to just be answering phones. So the quality manager reached out to me because he needed help, a quality system for them. So I got to be on the ground to help them establish 13485 and learn all about that process. So ever since 2003, I've been in the medical device space. I took a couple of years off but working in a blood bank, still in quality, but on the blood bank side. But then, yeah, a good last 12, almost 13 years I spent at a small, not small, like actually fairly large medical manufacturing company, but we were component manufacturers for x-ray tubes and flat panel imaging detectors. So I was the global compliance manager responsible for the quality system for Salt Lake City that had over a thousand employees and then a few sites around the world too. So that was really exciting. Wow. So a lot of your experiences today have been all about quality system initiatives. Yeah, exactly. I've lived and breathed uh, 1345, (laughs) you know, 820, all those fun standards, which I love it. You know, it's really exciting. And I love being in audits, which was another reason I think I got thrown into it. Nobody else really wanted to be in audit. So I enjoyed it. I like defending our quality system. I was going to ask you about that because I've talked to a couple of our other gurus, Sarah Adams and Taylor Brown specifically. Yeah, we've bonded. (laughs) Yeah, they get so excited when talking about audits and it doesn't matter what type of audit, they're like super excited about it. What is it to you that is so exciting about the audit experience? I don't know, sitting in front of that auditor and anticipating the next question. And I almost like to, it turns into a game in my mind. I want to be ready with the answer before they even ask the question. But, you know, really, I live and breathe all these processes and being able to defend it and being that defendant for the company was really exciting for me. Yeah, I know a lot of people are terrified to even (laughs) think about an audit. But, you know, you've certainly been through the ISO side of things. I'm guessing you probably have also been through your fair share of FDA inspections too. Only a couple at a couple 
couple of our other mm-hmm. sites, but yeah, there's a whole different level of terror <laughs> <laughs> when it comes to the FDA, but it was really exciting to be there. Thankfully, I wasn't in the hot seat for those, but I got to still be in the front room to participate. Absolutely. And so, I mean, obviously Greenlight has products and services to help companies with their quality system initiatives. What was the allure, the attraction to joining the Greenlight team? I mean, I'm guessing the product had something to do with it, but I guess elaborate a little bit more on that. What did you find refreshing or interesting about the Greenlight experience so far? When I was doing research, I, I used ETQ in a past life and, you know, that was my whole day was inside of a quality system software. So I just started looking at what other software programs were out there and just like, the, this is what I'm used to. This is what I think I'm good at. So instead of working in industry, I started to think of, you know, maybe I can help work at a company that sells this software. And when I met with a few people from Greenlight immediately, because I feel an interview is, is not uh, the company interviewing you, but it's you interviewing them. And I just felt that it was a connection right away. And I loved how positive everybody was during the interview process. And it's just not another person that they had to interview and go through. And yeah, the energy was amazing. The reviews online were amazing. So it really made me think this is somewhere that I can see myself. Absolutely. So folks listening out there, I want to remind you all that Greenlight is always looking to add to our team of gurus and subject matter experts. There's often opportunities to join either our sales team or to work directly with customers. Um, In fact, I think as we're chatting, Marianne and I are chatting today, I think we have a couple of positions that are open. So if this sounds like something you'd like to learn more about, I would encourage you to go to the Greenlight Guru website, www.greenlight.guru. Look at our careers pages, see if there's opportunities there. And, you know, even if there's not something currently posted, you know, shoot me a note because like I said, we're always looking to add expertise and great team members to the company. Uh, as we continue to grow, the need for that guru expertise continues to grow with that. So I would encourage you to check that out. And if you know a friend or, or a colleague or somebody that might be interested, send that information along to them as well. All right. So Marianne, so far you've been at Greenlight now for a few months. I, I honestly forget when you started, but yeah, I'm beginning my seventh week. Seventh week. Okay. So we're approaching month number two. And do you have any favorite stories that you want to share so far about the working with companies who are trying to evaluate their options for their quality systems? Any stories that come to mind so far? A couple of stories that really stood out were that I have heard. It's just, I've been listening to a lot of recorded demos too in, in preparation. And I love hearing how people's voices change. And sometimes like there's even video turned on when I can see their faces light up when we show them the design control matrix and the risk control, our, our risk matrix. And I know from personal experience, those are really hard to compile. And like myself in demos, when the account executive is showing it, I have to kind of hold myself back from going, that's so cool you know, because it's so easily created where I've been in audits and we had many electronic systems and it was really hard to pull all that together. So the fact that it's all in one location and easy to access and visually appealing is definitely one of the stories that I like hearing. One is the fact that people are getting through audits faster because audits are obviously close to my heart. So you can get through them faster and with zero non-conformances, it's amazing. Yeah, I think I just saw someone from our customer success team shared some feedback from a customer that they had a four day, I think it was an ISO audit scheduled and it only took a couple of, or no, actually I take that back. It was a supplier audit of some sort Mm -hmm. and it was scheduled for like four days and it only took like two days. And the reason for that is the efficiency of the green light system, having that single source of truth and you know everything at your fingertips, essentially to be able to easily find information. Cause I think that's one of the, you know, going back to one of the things you said a moment ago, when you're in an audit situation, you're trying to anticipate where this is going so mm-hmm. that in your mind, you're like, okay, where is that? You know, is it in a file cabinet somewhere? Is it on somebody's desk? Is it in a certain folder on a server? Where am I going to find it? Because you want to get through this audit audit process as efficiently as you can, right? Yes. So it's all about perception and audits. And if you can give a good perception and then show that you're compliant, you know, it makes it wraps it up much faster. 
Yeah. A lot of things happening in our industry right now. I think probably the most current thing that a lot of companies are still trying to navigate and struggling with from what I'm hearing is EUMDR. It sounds like that's still a big challenge. And then, you know, lo and behold, here in about a year or so, uh, EUIVDR will be theoretically live too. But you're, you know, sort of in the trenches. You're talking to companies every day, again, all over the world who are, you know, have some sort of challenge or objective or something that they're trying to accomplish. What are some of the themes that you're hearing from companies? What is the biggest issues that they're dealing with these days? Definitely the, the road to submission. And of course, that road, you're compiling all of the records and evidence that you need for that submission. So having all of their information in one place, I think is a big issue. Another theme is definitely interconnectivity. So I may have a CAPA, you know, looking at your post-market health. And then um, if you don't have all those railroad tracks in place to go to the next spot, not just during an audit, but for your own internal quality, it's just so much easier if when your systems are connected. And that's exactly what Greenlight offers to our customers. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there's always going to be something on the horizon that's going to change. I mean, I've read recently that, you know, FDA has been talking about transitioning to 13485 for mm -hmm. a couple of years now. And I think that those discussions are starting to ramp up quite a bit too. So where do you see that going? I mean, imagine FDA moves towards 1345. How do you think the industry is going to respond to that? I mean, it wouldn't be nice to just have a harmonized way of auditing and inspecting companies. But yeah, I think it's definitely been something Thing that the industry has been talking about for quite some time. And personally, I've always kind of followed more 1345 only because it was the more stringent of the two. So I knew that if I had 1345 covered, I had, you know, most of FDA as well. So I've got my 1345 at all times and ready to go. <laughs> I think part of that is, you know, when you go through the 1345 path, the certification path, you're essentially signing up your company for the routine surveillance and inspection. So it kind of keeps you on your toes and in a rhythm, you know, not to say FDA wouldn't show up for an inspection, but you know, it's just different. But I think you just don't have the time or the manpower. Yeah. I also think it's interesting too, that when a company hears or gets the call from FDA and says, oh, we're coming out next week, then all of a sudden there's like this panic attack. What do you think? about that when a company's like, oh crap, the FDA is coming out next week. Should they be panicking or do you have some other mindset do you think they should be in for that type of event? Yeah, the mindset that I was taught and that I try to as a leader is you should always be audit ready. There shouldn't be a panic. Your quality systems health should always be at a good place. So, I mean, the FDA, like I said, can be scary. <laughs> so just the fact that they're coming in and, if, but yes, you should always be audit ready and green light system like green light. It's because it's so strong and robust gives you that audit readiness. All right. So you've been in the industry now since 2003. So Good 15 uh, years. Yeah. yeah. I'm sure the time has flown and you've probably seen and experienced quite a few things in your career. For those listening who are, you know, maybe we'll say newer medical device companies, do you have any like tips or pointers, suggestions, things that can put them on the path of success? I have this quote that is from a Brazilian named Pele, which I'm Brazilian, so I like this quote. <laughs> it says that success is no accident. It is hard work, perseverance, learning, studying, sacrifice, and most of all, love of what you are doing or learning to do. And that's how I kind of feel about quality. It's not something that you can just expect to happen. You have to work at it. Yeah. And it's just, it's, it's in your products or processes, you know, it has to stem across both. And just because you have a quality system and maybe you pass your inspections or your audits with the notified body, you may not have a quality product. So the company and the individuals within that company have to work really hard for that success to be there. You know, you can't just have a cap process and then it's not effective, then it's a pointless kappa or have an internal audit performances. You know, you may not be anybody's friend at the end of the internal audit, but <laughs> we don't have many friends in quality, but we're not there to make friends. We're there to, to help the organization. And it's better that, that we catch those rather than uh, the FDA or the notified body. Yeah, I, I totally agree. And I hope we get to a point in this industry here soon where we can look at internal audit and audits and the quality team as our friends, or, or at least respect the role that quality plays in the process. Because to your point, I mean, if you have good quality in your products and processes, it's not accidental. It just doesn't you know, happen by serendipity. It, it takes some intention to make those things happen. Now, the converse, though, is 
you know, if you don't have intention on your quality and, and focus on ensuring the highest and best quality of your products and processes, you can almost guarantee you're going to have poor quality as an outcome. So, you know, if you Absolutely. ignore it, it's going to be a bad result. Yeah. So it's great to be at a company in a job that I get to talk about what I love and teach other people how to be better. So this just seems like a dream job. I'm getting paid to talk about what I love. <laughs> <laughs> That's great to hear. Well, Marianne, any other final tips, pointers, suggestions before we wrap up our discussion today? Nope. But thank you so much. All right, folks. Marianne Mitchell, solutions engineer at Greenlight Guru. And if you're a company that's interested in learning more about the Greenlight Guru medical device success platform, the only software platform designed specifically and exclusively for the medical device industry, that I would encourage you to go to www.greenlight.guru. Someone from our team will reach out to you. We would like to understand your needs, your requirements, the things that you're trying to do. And there's a good chance that if you do connect with us, you might get a chance to talk with Marianne and she can share some of her pro tips and the things that she's seen that goes well, some of the things that she's seen that maybe didn't go so well, and really help you understand how the Greenlight platform might be a great solution for you to implement at your company. So check it out. As always, thank you for listening to the Global Medical Device Podcast, the number one podcast in the medical device industry. And that is because of you. You keep tuning in, you keep sharing with your friends, with your colleagues that this podcast exists. So thank you for doing so. And as always, this is your host and founder at Greenlight Guru, John Spear, and you have been listening to the Global Medical Device Podcast.